What's good, everybody? It's your boy JTL Opposite from the Norm. And real quick, I just want to let y'all know about Opposite from the Norm apparel t shirts. Brought to you by G Fam G Wear. You like our show and our content? Then go to GFAMENT.com and click on G Store, and there you can purchase an Opposite from the Norm t shirt. Also, you can check out other great tees that represent true kings and true queens as well. Shirts that motivate and make you feel great. Once again, that's gfamnt.com and click on the G Store link to get your apparel tees. Now back to the show. Chill. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy JTL opposite from Norm. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, share, comment, and subscribe. So, without further ado, we're going to get into sports. We wrap up. Yo, yo, this is your man HD coming at you again with another week in review. Y'all don't mind me. Tonight, we doing this on the late night tip. We're going to be sipping. You know what I'm saying? Some of this good, good, good wine. So, y'all just bear with me on this. First off, we're going to start with a little UFC. I don't get on my case. I don't know how to properly pronounce my man's name, but he one of the baddest motherfuckers on earth, Khabib. He won his fight, boosting his record to 29-0. and 0. He won in the second round with the triangle choke. I was trying to catch this on Saturday because it came on around 2 p.m. in the afternoon because they was uh, fighting over in um, Abu Dhabi Um, because normally the UFC fights, you know, be at 10, 11, 12 at night, but this one was at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And shit, by the time, you know, I'm getting my lunch ready and everything, I get a text message from my brother saying, Khabib, and I'm like, damn, I done missed it that quick. So he didn't take that long to handle his business, I went back and, and watched it afterwards. Um, happened in the second round, a minute, 34 seconds to go. You know, um, as I said, bringing his record to 29-0. and Then afterwards, uh, he surprised the entire world with announcing his retirement um, after the fight. Um, I went on to read that, uh, unfortunately for him, he, he lost his father. Um, God bless his family. And, you know, he made a promise to his mom, you know, like, yo, I'm not going to be doing this no more since Pop's not here. I'm going to do one more fight and that's it. So he went out on top 29 and 0. Um, a lot of people, you know, there's a debate going around now. Is he the greatest ever light heavyweight in UFC history? A lot of people are arguing for Bones Jones um, as being the greatest fighter ever from UFC. Um, but. Another thing about this fight, uh, Dana White came out and said that Khabib broke his foot three weeks ago, but never told anybody about it. So that further proves how bad this dude is. So um, good luck to him. He's going out on top, retiring um, at a young age. He's only 32 years old. So um, that's uh, somebody that we won't be able to watch anymore. Um he was a great fighter. Um, I happened, I was able to see his last three fights. Um, all three of his last fights, he won by submission, um, especially when he fucked up loudmouth Conor McGregor. That was one of the, the, the best fights that I've seen in a while, just from a pure enjoyment standpoint of him uh, shutting the fuck up with McGregor. Because McGregor was talking a lot of hot shit about him and his family. So big ups to Khabib. Um, on over to a little bit of baseball. Um, the World Series ended with the Dodgers defeating the hometown Rays four games to two. Last game, the Dodgers won three to one, low scoring game. And there's a huge amount of controversy um, around this game because they took out uh, Snell, who was pitching a hell of a game for the Rays. Um, a lot of people are angry, um, even um Snell itself said that he was very unhappy um but after they took him out that's when the Dodgers took control of the game eventually winning the World Series so the hometown team couldn't pull it out but I think that's a big feat for them even making it to the World Series uh, especially with them being such a small market team to make it against you know the Dodgers who are a big market um got a lot of big money to spend so um 
that was a very big thing for the Rays to make it to the World Series. Unfortunately, they lost it in six games. On over to review a little bit of uh, college football um, from last week. Um, we had number one Clemson going up against Syracuse. This wasn't much of a game. Syracuse was, is one and five on the year. Uh, they beat them 47-21. Uh, the guy with everyone saying is going to be the number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, threw for 289 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Alabama, which is the number two team in the nation, won 48 to 17 over Tennessee, uh, moving them to 5 and 0. However, in this game, Alabama lost one of their top wide receivers um, going down for the year. And that's going to be a big blow to them. So we'll see how they recover. But from the looks of it, it's more than likely going to be Alabama and Clemson once again in the national title game. Um, you know, unless something weird goes on that happens. Um, but I don't foresee Alabama losing any SEC games, nor do I see Clemson losing any. Uh, Notre Dame, who's the number three team in the nation, they stayed undefeated, moving to 5-0. and oh. They defeated Pittsburgh 45-3. to uh, Notre Dame's quarterback, Ian Book, threw for 312 yards and three touchdowns in this game. Pittsburgh was only able to muster a field goal back in the first quarter for the only points of the entire game. And rounding out top five, we had Ohio State playing in their first game of the year. They won that one 52-17 over Nebraska. Uh, former powerhouse, uh, Justin Fields, who many believe will be the second pick in the draft. Great, dynamic, young black quarterback for Ohio State. A young man who can not only run it, but throw it. That's a key thing. They always trying to pigeonhole the young black quarterbacks, you know, like they used to do my boy, uh, excuse me, my former boy, Mike Vick, not too much of a fan of his ass anymore. And a lot of the other quarterbacks like, you know, Donovan McNabb, Randall Cunningham, you know, I could keep naming more where they say that all we can do is run, can't read the defense, can't sit in the pocket and throw. But this young man, Justin Fields, can do both. Um, he was 20 for 21 in this game, which shows you his great accuracy in throwing that ball, throwing for 276 yards and two touchdowns to lead Nebraska, excuse me, Ohio State over Nebraska for their first win in the Big Ten. Um we had a team in the top 10 go down, which was Penn State, number eight Penn State. They went down to Indiana 36-35. Very, very close game. That one went to overtime. Uh, we had the number uh, 16, Oklahoma State. They defeated number 17, Iowa State, 24-21, another close game. Um, we got another top 10 team, Cincinnati, number nine defeating SMU, who's number 16, and they won 42-13. to 13. So that's a little bit of roundup for college. Now we're going to go over to the big boys, the big dogs, to the NFL. And there's quite a lot to get to, so I'm going to try to go through it fairly quickly. First, of course, I got to hit on my team, the San Francisco 49ers. Actually pulled out another win, which made me very happy. 33 to 6 over the New England Patriots. Now, this game is a little bit bittersweet for me, being that they was going up against my man Cam Newton, who was 9 for 15 for 98 yards and three interceptions. And Bill Belichick actually pulled my man from the game and benched him. There's nothing worse than being the starting quarterback, and not only being the starting quarterback a black star quarterback and getting benched. But the only thing I can say is I just hope that they don't railroad my man Cam Newton. I mean, all, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of sports, different sports shows. I read a lot of things. And according to the numbers, you know, from analytics, all those uh, smarty arty nerd people who do the analytics, the New England Patriots wide receivers are last in the entire NFL in separation. That means getting any separation from corners. So we all know everyone says in the NFL, 
you have to throw your wide receivers open because it's a lot faster. The corners are a lot tougher to beat than in college, but his receivers aren't even getting any separation at all. And, you know, they don't have any kind of big name wide receivers, no big name tight end. Their running backs are not good. So it's kind of like this man is trying to just win with nobody and they're going to end up blaming him. And I heard uh, one report saying that, you know, if Cam doesn't turn it around and, you know, New England doesn't pick up his contract after this year, he might have a very bleak off season for being signed again, which I think is very, very effed up because I believe this man still got a lot of game left in him. His arm still looks good. And they got to think about the fact that this man just came off COVID. And a lot of other analysts are saying, you know, that we don't really know the entire effects of how COVID is affecting these football players' bodies. Anyway, I hope my man can bounce back. But on the 49 side, our sorry-ass quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, was 20 for 25 for 277 yards, two touchdowns, no, excuse me, uh, two interceptions, zero touchdowns. They're just designing this game. Uh, our offensive, uh, our head coach, um, Kyle Shanahan, he's basically just having this man run the offense to not fuck up. If we had a better quarterback, I would have a lot more confidence in my team. Jimmy Garoppolo is not the fucking answer. Anyway, I'm glad that we got that win. Uh, the Eagles defeated the Giants 22-21. to That was the uh, the Thursday night game from last week. There's even no need for me to go over that. Both of these teams are terrible. Um, the Giants 1-6 on the year. The Eagles 2-4-1. However, with how crappy their division is, the Eagles still can uh, win that division. Um, we had the Lions defeating the Falcons 23 to 21, excuse me, 23 to um, 22, moving the Lions up to three and three, pushing the Falcons down to one and six. We had the Browns, who are now five and two on the year, defeat the Bengals 37 to 34. This was a really, really entertaining game. I was able to see bits and pieces of this one. I also was able to see some highlights. Uh, Baker Mayfield for the Browns was 22 for 28, five touchdowns, one interception. Joe Burrow, the rookie for the Bengals, threw the ball 47 times, completed 35 for 406 yards and three touchdowns. Joe Burrow um, has one of the, the worst offensive lines in front of him. So for him to be a rookie and to be standing in there and keeping his team in games, that's showing a lot. On the Brown side, we did get the news that Odell Beckham Jr., the big name wide receiver is out for the rest of the year with a um, torn ACL. So that's a big blow to the Browns. One over to what was touted as the game of the day. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Tennessee Titans 27 to 24. This game was, was very, very entertaining as well. I was able to see portions of this. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers was able to hold Derrick Henry, the top running back in the NFL, to 20 attempts for 75 yards. He did score a touchdown. This was a very, very hard-fought game. However, the Titans had a chance to win the game with 19 seconds left, and their field goal kicker missed it. When I saw that, I just was like, man, just looking at even, – even if, if you were watching the game, Ben Roethlisberger, who's the quarterback for the Steelers, when the camera panned over to him, he was like, oh, my God. He, even he couldn't believe that he missed this field goal, which would have, you know, took the game over time. All right, on to the Saints and the Panthers. Saints was able to move to 4-2, and two, defeating the Panthers 27-24. to 24. They had Buffalo Bills moving up to 5-2, and two, defeating the New York Jets, who moved to 0-7 on the year. The Jets are just pitiful. Um, it, it's, it's really bad. Um, I know plenty of Jets fans, and it just re looks real bleak. Many people are saying that the Jets may even run the table in a negative way and go 0-16. This game really, really, really brought me a lot of joy, and I'm actually smiling right now. The Dallas Cowboys lost 25-3. to They couldn't even muster a goddamn touchdown in this game. Andy Dalton, their starting quarterback, got taken out of the game after he got knocked out. He was concussed 
laying on the field. He ended up 9 for 19 for 75 yards and one INT. Ezekiel Elliott, who got his big-time contract in the offseason, 12 attempts for 45 yards. He's been getting bashed a lot this week um, by insiders who actually study film for a living, um, guys like who work for the NFL, um, NFL.com, with his blocking. If you watch the game, it looked like this dude didn't even want to be engaged. That's that's a big duty for a running back, you know, to be an extra uh, line of defense on protection of the quarterback. And there were times where he didn't even look like he wanted to even lower his shoulder. He looked like he didn't even want to be out there. So the Cowboys, of course, have fell down to two and five. Um, and the Washington football team, actually, that was their second win of the year, moving them to two and five as well. So they're tied in their division. Um, the Green Bay Packers moved to five and one, defeated the Texans 35 to 20. It's looking kind of bleak over there for Deshaun Watson. I'm a big Deshaun Watson fan. Um, I think he has a lot of talent, but, you know, in the offseason, they traded away his uh, best target and the best wide receiver in the NFL, Hopkins. They traded him to the Cardinals, and you can just see that he's missing them. And the Texans' defense has gone down. Um, Aaron Rodgers, star quarterback for the Packers, 23 of 34 for four touchdowns, zero picks this week, and 283 passing yards. And Devontae Adams, who's one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL had 13 catches for 196 yards and two touchdowns. Big, big game for him. Home team Buccaneers moved to 5-2, and two, defeating the Raiders 45-20. to 20. Um, Man, I can't even lie. In this game, uh, old man Tom Brady, who threw 33 for 45, four touchdowns, 369 yards. He actually looked good. When he was when the the plays that I seen and that I watched and then some of the highlights that I watched, he didn't really look like he had a noodle arm out there. As a lot of people are saying, he, he his arm looked good. Um, I think it's it's also with him having a little bit more comfort back there, but he looked good throwing it around. Um, he look didn't look like he was having any discomfort. Uh, this you know discomfort in throwing the ball. He was putting the ball in tight spots. Um. Had a good game, um, and their defense showed up again. Um, you know, like I said last week, I did not know that the Bucks had this good of a defense that in the top three in defense in the entire NFL, and um, the Bucks might have something this year. The uh, defending champs, Kansas City Chiefs, moved to six and one on the year, defeating the Denver Broncos forty-three to sixteen. That game was was pretty much lopsided. The Chiefs, you know, just looked like they were yawning out there um just a, a very normal game for them throwing the ball all over the field um the broncos are up and coming team but this game it, it just really didn't even look like the uh the champs were even trying patrick mahomes finished 15 for 23 200 yards one touchdown but one thing that was surprising the kansas city Chiefs defense was actually looking really good too so if they have both offense and defense, they may be going for a repeat. Uh, the San Diego Chargers moved to two and four with their rookie quarterback, Justin Herbert. They won 39-29 over the Jacksonville Jaguars, who fell down to one and six. In the Sunday night game, which may not have been the best game of the week, but it definitely was the most entertaining game, the Arizona Cardinals snuck out the win 37-34 over the Seattle Seahawks. Now, both of the starting quarterbacks play very, very well. Um, Russell Wilson, who many have said is the front runner for the MVP, threw for 388 yards. He was 33 for 50 with three touchdowns. However, he threw three interceptions, which is definitely not like him. Russell Wilson is someone who protects the ball really well, um, but he had three INTs in this game. And Kyler Murray, the second year quarterback from the Cardinals, 34 for 48, 360 yards passing himself, three touchdowns and one pick. Now, if you watch this game, there was a lot of highlights in this game. I wanted to give some big ups to 
someone I just mentioned not too long ago, DeAndre Hopkins, who came over from the uh, Texans in the offseason. Ten catches for 103 yards, one touchdown. And a lot of times he just makes it look too easy. And there was this one play that they've shown a lot of times this week where Kyler Murray was actually smiling and laughing before he threw the ball up to DeAndre Hopkins because, hey, he he knows if you throw it in his area, Hopkins is going to catch it. So it must be real nice to be standing back there and laughing and smiling as you are throwing the ball. Um, On the other side, Tyler Lockett, who has been, for most of his career, known as like a possession receiver, he actually showed out in this game. He had 15 catches. That's right. 15 catches in one game for 200 yards and three touchdowns. There was this one play, beautiful, beautiful throw by Russell Wilson, just tossed the ball up like a tennis ball, floated over the defense. Tyler Lockett caught it in the end zone over Patrick Peterson, who has for years been one of the top corners in the entire league. That play was awesome. But the play of the entire game was now this play was when Russell Wilson, you know, made one of his mistakes. And Buda Baker, who is the, um, I, w- I would say, is the best safety in the entire NFL. Um, he got a big contract in the offseason. Um, and, and not just me, a, a lot of the, the analysts are saying he stepped up and turned into the best safety in the NFL. Um, this man is just all over the field every game. Even in this game, he had 11 solo tackles. He had um, an INT, which is what I'm speaking of right now. And if you haven't seen this, go on YouTube. He was racing down the field. And then on the other side, DK Metcalf, who is the starting wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks. He's, you know, and speaking of DeAndre Hopkins, DK Metcalf may be the second best wide receiver in the league. This guy is is just a menace. This dude is six foot four, about 240 pounds, and he chased down Buddha Baker like this man was in first grade. You gotta go to YouTube and just put in DK Metcalf chase down. What a lot of people don't understand, this dude being 6'4, 240. Wide receivers aren't supposed to be that big. If you're 6'4", 240, that's bigger than some linebackers. Ray Lewis, who is one of the best linebackers in the history of the game, wasn't even 6'4". And Ray Lewis, you know, was all over the field hitting everybody. This man is 6'4", 240, runs a sub 4'3", 40. You you have to go watch this play. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody that big run like that. He he looked at like some kind of alien on the field. That play was ridiculous. That was a great game. And if you can, just go back and watch the entire game. Very entertaining, but very little to no defense. And lastly, the Monday night game, the Rams defeated the Bears 24 to 10, moving the Rams to 5 and 2. The only teams that there were four teams that didn't play the Ravens, the Colts, the Dolphins, and the Vikings all had a bye week. So, That's the wrap-up for this week. I'll be hitting y'all up next week with another round of sports. I'm your man, HD. Take a sit with me. I'm out.